And what did that faith do? Well, Paul goes on, he says, Yes, they subdued kingdoms, they stopped the mouths of lions, verse 34, quenched the violence of fire, and so on. But when you get to verse 35, come on. In verse 35, come and just read it, and what does it say? It says, women received their dead, raised to life. So they were seeing the dead raised to life. Come on. It wasn't just Jesus that rose from the dead. These miracles were actually happening through the Old Testament period. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. So the whole of the thing was that this act of faith applied because what they were seeking for was something that was still to come in the kingdom. Oh, yeah. Now let me go on. It says in verse 36, others had trial of cruel mockings, scourgings, imprisonment. They were stoned, cut in two, yeah, tempted, slain with the sword, wandered about in sheepskins and goats, in destitute, rejected and tormented, of whom, in verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. Now, what this is saying in the Old Testament, what it's referring to in the Old Testament, is this phenomenal power of a faith which made these leaders, these believers, so strong that they were able to overcome everything, even death, simply because they saw something more than life, something more than like Moses. They were choosing to suffer for God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin because of two things. One, their faith was a faith in the impossible. And secondly, it was faith in a future kingdom. All these things were done because of the faith that they had in the coming kingdom. With people like Abraham, it was the promise that he would be the father of a great nation, and out of Abraham would come the whole of the Hebrew nation. But you see, Abraham himself never saw the fulfillment of the vision. But he died in faith, he lived in faith, believing that God would fulfill it. I want to challenge Christians today to live in faith that God will give you the reward in the kingdom, that you will be part of the kingdom, that this we are not, we are not citizens of this world. We're citizens of a heavenly kingdom. And I'm already living in the thought, the atmosphere, the anticipation of what is to come, what will come in the kingdom. And so no sacrifice is too great. Because if we just enjoy the pleasures of this world, it's nothing, as Moses said, compared to what God will give us in the future. And then in verse 39, it's so strong. All of these obtained a good report through faith. Although at that time they did not receive the promise, because in verse 40, and this to my mind is an extremely unusual verse, because in verse 40, God had provided a better reward for all of us so that when we come into the kingdom, we will all receive the reward, the same reward, for that faithfulness. Mm -hmm. 